Hello everyone, I'm the Saxy Gamer, and today we're here for yet another Civilization 6 Top 3 video, where today we'll be taking a look at the three best religious leaders in the game. As with the previous list, these are in no particular order, just three of some of the best civs that I have decided that should be included on this list, and I'm going to give some honorable mentions at the end. So, if your favorite religious civ is not on this list, do not worry, maybe they're in an honorable mention, or maybe I just don't think they're as good as you do. Anyways though, let's go ahead and get straight into things, and start off with the first civ on our list, and that is is Russia led by Peter. So from the start of the game, Russia is pretty good at religious victory because they are able to get extra faith from tundra tiles, and since you also have a tundra spawn bias as Russia, this means that you're probably going to start the game out with at least one faith per turn if you're working one of these tundra tiles. So that is something that I do want to mention is that if you want to be able to get to your pantheon faster, make sure that you are working one of the tiles that is producing faith, because otherwise you're not going to get any bonus from these yields until you start working the tile. But this extra faith in the start of the game means that you will probably be one of the first people to get to a Pantheon. There are a few other civs that can get the Pantheons faster than you, but Russia definitely gets a big advantage by being able to start with faith on turn 1. When it comes to Pantheons, Dance of the Aurora is an easy pick for Russia because you will be probably settling in a lot of the Tundra. You get a lot of faith in the Tundra already, so getting Dance of the Aurora means that you are going to get extra faith on your Holy Sites from being in that Tundra as well. If you combine this with work ethic then, you can get some really insane uh, holy sites throughout your empire with 6 faith, 6 production, and if you're lucky enough to get Hildegard of Bingen, you can get 6 science on them as well. So, things like this make Russia very strong. The lava is also nice because it is a little bit cheaper than the holy site to build, so you can put it down faster, which makes it a little bit easier to get your religion in the first place. With all of these things combined, so the fact that you're going to be getting extra faith on your holy sites from Dance of the Aurora, settling the Tundra, getting extra faith from the Tundra itself, this allows you to have plenty of faith to buy your missionaries and apostles and spread your religion and then win a religious victory. So Russia, definitely one of the strongest religious civs in the game, super easy to play and generally kind of good from the first turn. Number two on this list is basically uh, the opposite of Russia in terms of the climate in which you will settle in, and that is Mansa Musa of the Mali. So the Mali are very, very strong, and I think that personally, in my opinion, I would probably put them at the top of the list. I know that I said that this list is in no particular order, but I do kind of think that Mali are the best in terms of playing a traditional religious game where you just spam out a ton of missionaries and apostles and convert everybody. So what makes the Mali so good? For one, you're going to be getting free faith at the start of the game for each adjacent desert tile. This means that you are almost guaranteed to get the first Pantheon as long as you're able to get plus three faith uh, or more on your capital. And this is something that is very easy to do uh, whenever you're playing the Mali. As long as you don't get a terrible spawn, you can easily get six food, six faith on your capital, which means that you're basically guaranteed the first Pantheon. Just like with Russia, there is one of the pantheons that stands out as being particularly good, and that is Desert Folklore, just like we had Dance of the Aurora with Russia. So Desert Folklore is going to give you extra Holy Site adjacency from every desert tile that is adjacent to the Holy Site. If you're playing Mansa Musa, you probably want to be settled in the desert already because that's where you get faith uh, on your city centers from. So combine this with Desert Folklore, and you're, you're going to be getting a ton of faith from having your cities settled in the desert, a ton of extra faith from having your holy sites placed in the desert, and then once again, just like with Russia, you can take work ethic to make up for some of the production loss that you do get as the Mali. The other thing that makes the Mali particularly good at religious victory is that the Suguba, their unique commercial hub, discounts faith purchases by 20%. So this matters quite a bit as you get later on into the game, so every missionary and apostle that you purchase makes future ones more expensive. Being able to get this discount means that you are not going to be impacted quite as heavily by that uh, by that extra cost, and as you get later on to the game, when, when apostles can start to become very, very expensive, they're not going to be quite as expensive for the Mali. You can also stack this with the religious belief that discounts your missionaries and apostles to make this even less of a penalty as you get later on in the game, and this makes the spam of missionaries and apostles so easy. This is why I say that generally uh, I think that they are the best for like the traditional religious victory of just spamming missionaries and apostles, because you can afford them so much easier, you still get a ton of faith, and it's easier to get your Pantheon and stuff in the start of the game due to the fact that you get a lot of extra early game faith. So, the Mali, I think, very, very strong religious civ. Perhaps a little bit more difficult to play than Russia just because they do have some downsides in terms of their production penalty. But aside from that, I think that they are a very strong civ. And for the last leader on my list that I want to mention, we have one that is a little bit different from the other ones in terms of how you should play the religious game. And that is Basil II of Byzantium. 
So when you're playing Basil, you definitely want to be going for a religion and domination type of game. You don't want to just exclusively play, you know, like the turtley religion, spam apostle, spam missionaries type of game. You want to be very aggressive and go and attack all of your neighbors, and there's a number of things that make this really, really good for Byzantium. So starting off, one of the issues that a lot of civs have is that they don't get an advantage towards founding a religion, but this is not an issue for Byzantium because you get plus one extra great profit point per turn from your holy sites, meaning that it's very easy to get a religion at the start of the game. Since the excess great profit points will also give extra faith once, you, uh, once all of the religions have been founded, this does mean that you are going to get a, big, a bit of extra faith throughout the game uh, just from having holy sites down that are generating all these extra great profit points. The other nice thing with Byzantium is that he gets uh, plus three religious strength for each holy city following your religion, and this includes your own holy city, meaning that your religious combat units can be very effective and easy for spreading your religion. So with this, every time that you successfully convert a holy city, your units just get stronger and stronger. So you get kind of a religious snowball as you make your way through the game that if you've already converted four holy cities, you're going to be getting plus 12 religious strength on your apostles, which means that you can pretty easily mince up some of the opposing apostles. The other way that you can actually increase the religious strength of your apostles is with your Togma unit, so this thing is going to give plus four religious strength to adjacent apostles as well, which means that if you combine this with the fact that you can convert the holy site, or that uh, you get plus three extra th religious strength from holy cities, then you can end up with a ton of extra religious strength on your apostles and have a huge advantage over other ones. And the last thing that makes it really good is that playing alongside Domination with Basil means that every unit killed is going to spread your religion further, kind of like what happens when you normally kill an opposing missionary. So every time you kill a military unit, a spread religion charge is used on surrounding cities within, I don't exactly know how many tiles, but this makes it very easy to convert multiple cities at a time, and you don't even have to sp spend any faith on missionaries or apostles to do so. You can just do this while also, you know, gaining extra cities from taking them over and converting multiple cities at a time. Not to mention the fact that if you have something like Crusade or anything like that, you're going to be getting a lot of combat bonuses that just make this easier and easier to kill more enemy units and thus spread your religion further and further. Basil is the prime example of, like, a super snowball religious combat sieve. The other nice thing about this playing the religion domination game is that so to win a religious victory you have to convert the majority of another uh, the the majority of all civs in the game to your religion. If every civ only has one city, then obviously it's very easy to gain the majority because you only have to convert one city. So this is something I feel like it's kind of underrated for Basil. People don't think of it quite as much, but as you take over more and more civs, it becomes progressively easier and easier to to convert the majority of their empire to your religion. So it's kind of something that works out very nicely between religion and domination, domination and religion with Basil. Uh, they both complement each other very well. I think that he's one of the most, like, one of the most synergistic leaders in terms of combining two victory types, and I think he's very strong as a result. As far as some honorable mentions are concerned, uh, I think that Coupe is deserving of an honorable mention just because of his ability to get faith from his terrain. Um, I think that Saladin is also worth an honorable mention because he can get a lot of faith from the Madrasa as well, in addition to the fact that he is guaranteed a religion every game. That is obviously a very big plus. And I think that there are a lot of other leaders that definitely can be pretty good at religious victory. Uh, I'm thinking of kind of like Japan, I think Guitarja, I think Menelik. I think all of them can be very good at religious victory, uh, but just not quite as strong as some of the ones on this list. So thank you everyone for watching. I have been the Saxy Gamer. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to like. If not, feel free to dislike. If you're looking for some more Civilization 6 content, feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.